What could you do with $60,000? Well, you could put down a payment on this house in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Nice house. You can start investing and grow a portfolio like a grown up. You could pay off your student loans, maybe. Or you could buy this. That's right, baby! It's time to go bumper to bumper on the Ferrari fighting Japanese supercar legend, the Acura NSX5! This episode was sponsored by Audible. Look, reading is super important. I do it every day. But if you're a busy tier two celebrity like me, you don't have time to read. That's why Audible is tight. Audible has an unbeatable selection of audiobooks that rival the library of Alexandria. That is a big library. Audible members can choose three titles every month to listen to on any device. I recommend Go Like Hell. It's about Ford versus Ferrari at Le Mans. Get your free 30-day trial and download your audiobook at audible.com slash bumper to bumper and listen for a change. That's audible.com slash bumper to bumper or text bumper to bumper to 500 500. In the mid 80s, Honda was getting ready to launch their Acura luxury brand in the US. To make people take them seriously, Acura needed a halo car. Around the same time, Honda was also involved in Formula One racing. Basically, long story short, this right here was the result. Honda had a goal. They wanted to show the world that their humble company could build an F1 inspired car for the street and hang with the big boys. Honda believed they could build a car like Ferrari, better than Ferrari. Unlike pretty much every other Honda of the time, the NSX is rear mid-engine, meaning the engine is between the passenger compartment and the rear wheels, just like the F1 cars Honda was working on at the time. What a mid-engine setup does is distribute the car's weight to all four tires more equally or improve weight distribution. Honda developed an entirely new power plant for the NSX. This three liter, all aluminum C30 AV6 makes a respectable 270 hertz and 210 pounds dirt. Honda achieved this with forged pistons and special titanium connecting rods that decreased rotational mass. But the coolest thing about this engine is denoted by a simple four letter word molded onto the intake manifold. Uh, VTEC. Ah! You Honda fanboys already know what I'm talking about, but VTEC stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control, or VTEC. What this means is that as the engine goes higher and higher into the revs, a little robot man on the engine is sensing engine speed and throttle position. On the NSX, VTEC kicks in around 5,800 RPM. When VTEC kicks in, you get that more power, baby. Also, this oil catch can right here uh, is not stock. <laughs> the transmission has also been switched out with a multi-plate clutch, which distributes the engine load over more surface area, making for smoother shifts. Solid upgrade. Let's go see how it feels. I'm gonna play with the shift knob. <laughs> The interior is classic Honda. If you've driven a 90s Honda, you'll feel right at home in the NSX. It's weird because despite being a groundbreaking sports car, you can tell that somewhere along the line, this thing is cousins with a Civic. The stock seats have been replaced with these Recaro fixed back racing seats. And let me tell you, they are snug. <laughs> if I got this car, I probably would get some fixed backs like this, but I would get bigger ones because I'm a bigger boy than the last owner, apparently. It's an aftermarket Alpine radio because it's a Japanese sports car from the 90s. Aftermarket Momo steering wheel with the Honda button. This shifter has some of the cleanest action I have ever felt in a car. Everything in here is extremely driver focused to the point where most of the controls for the interior are on the driver's side door. Like, no, don't touch it. You can't, it's not for you, it's for me. That's what I would say if I had friends. A cool little thing right here, the vents are on the doors, which I think is neat. And it has one of the coolest door handles I've ever seen. The column is a really cool design. The hazard lights are up here. Got defrost right there, so I don't have to look around for it. Ooh, I'm on the two gay, and I better put my blinker lights on, my hazard lights on, because I gotta go save my friend Takume. He's gone over the edge. 
pull over, throw my hazards on, hop out, Takumi! Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you really scared us, buddy. Let's get out of here. Uh, the Japanese police are coming, Takumi! Uh, let's go to your dad's house and eat some tofu. <laughs> <laughs> this car also has a really cool piece of kit. It's called the Donut Air Freshener. You can get one at donutmedia.com. This thing feels fast on the inside and it looks fast on the outside. Honda modeled the bubble canopy after the shape of an F-16 Fighting Falcon fighter jet. That's right, this car is inspired by a freaking jet. I'm like Maverick up in this bitch. That's right, Iceman. I am dangerous. I want one. The Acura NSX was the first mass produced car with a monocoque chassis. What does that mean? Your car at home is probably a unibody, meaning the frame is not detachable from the body like on a truck. A unibody chassis has frame-like elements like metal tubes, box frame sections, and bulkheads. A monocoque is similar, but also completely different. On a monocoque, the outer skin, like these body panels, provide structural rigidity for the entire car. Those F1 cars Honda was supplying engines to were also monocoques. So, to build an F1 car for the street, the NSX had to be one too. There was a problem though. Building a monocoque out of steel would negate any weight savings of using a monocoque in the first place. So Honda had to make their own aluminum. They developed five different alloys to use in the NSX. That came together to make a sturdy platform, the likes of which had never been seen before. But that wasn't sturdy enough. McLaren team driver and F1 legend Ayrton Senna had a little impromptu test session with an NSX test car just a few months after its debut in 1989. Senna told Honda the car felt fragile, which isn't a word you want to hear from the best F1 driver in the world about your F1 car for the road. So Honda went back to the drawing board and made some changes. A few months later, they invited Senna to drive the newest version, which was now 50% stiffer. Yummy. You might be able to tell that this car has been modified based on the ride height. That's because it has. This boy's got trace racing coilovers, and I tell you, Big Bro is a fan of the stance, even if it probably doesn't handle as well as Senna would have liked. And it makes my little tail wag. Up front, the NSX has a strong resemblance to the Ferrari 348 it was designed to defeat. And I know this is gonna sound crazy, and it might be, but I think the NSX looks better. You Enzo Seichiro for the win! Oh! <laughs> looks are kind of Ferrari's thing, and to beat them at looks is a huge accomplishment. Through the main opening is the radiator, which wasn't placed in the engine compartment to save space and optimize cooling. The cooling travels through no less than 10 billion feet of line to finally reach the engine. I don't think it's that much, but it's a lot. It's a pretty long car. Now this car was designed in the 80s, just like your boy. And it's Japanese, unlike your boy. And it's sporty, just like your boy. That's a combination that can only mean one thing. Pop up motherfucking headlights, baby! With the headlights in the down position, the NSX has an insanely low drag coefficient, which means it cuts through the air like butter. Like butter, baby. More butter, baby. More speed, baby. Let's grease this pig up. Let's grease this pig up and go to Suzuka, baby. This car is faster during the day than it is at night. But believe me, at night, she's plenty fast, too. <laughs> Looking at the NSX from the side, it gets even better. You see that nose is as slim as possible and the bubble canopy is just that, the bubble. It's got a real low belt line just like I used to have in high school and it continues to the back rising ever so slightly to the elongated tail. Seeing this car from this angle confirms that it is something special. This is what happens when the same people who made the Civic and Integra into real freaking race cars get to build a freaking race car from scratch. The tail isn't just there to hold an engine. That V6 is actually pretty small. Because this is a Honda and they wanted you to drive the NSX every day, they included a trunk at the very back. Unlike some other supercars, this one is actually usable. 
The trunk is big enough for two packed duffel bags. In the back is the signature feature of the NSX, the tail lights. If you played Gran Turismo, you probably have these seared into the back of your retina. These things are timeless and they will never not look good. I think that goes for the entire car. There's something about late 80s, early 90s Japanese cars that makes them look like they'll last forever. And a lot of them will. Below the lights is the exhaust. Obviously that's where it always is. But on this car, it's been modified with some pretty little tips. It's got a cat back titanium exhaust system. Yummy daddy. Sitting on top of the tail lights is this little wing, but this guy isn't stock. The stock one is flat. This one is slightly not flat. Thank you, Nolan, for doing the research. The wheels ain't stock either, baby. These bad boys are both PE 37s. They're one piece forged and they weigh under 20 pounds. These things might as well be stock because of how common they are. Everybody uses them, but for good reason. They're basically the Jordans of the wheel world. Our PF ones are Vans Classic. These are Jordans because they're more expensive. I can't afford Jordans. <laughs> the Acura NSX is one of those special cars that you can't look away from. I'm in the automotive industry. I literally look, think, and talk about cars all day and this is one of the few cars that still gets my jimmy going every time i see one honda set out to build a car that gave you the f1 experience on the street every single day and i believe that they succeeded now if you'll excuse me i'm gonna go have an f1 experience of my own Thanks for watching Bumper to Bumper every Tuesday until the day I die. Big shouts to Tom Rank for hooking us up with this car. Those guys hook us up all the time. We love them very much. Sean, I love you, buddy. Uh, let us know down in the comments what cars you want us to look at. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Hit that like button. It really helps us out. I love you.